Hello everyone, what's up? In this weathering tutorial, I'll show you how I painted and weathered the tank tracks on this awesome Grim Whippet tank by Grim Prince. Oh, and by the way, I'll be giving away this tank to one of you very soon. More on that later. Before we start with the tracks proper, let me tell you a bit more about this awesome model. This is the fourth Grim Prince tank that I painted up, as some of you may know. All Grim tanks are inspired by historical ones, but with 40k weapons and many stylistic touches that any Warhammer player will recognize. Unlike other 3D printed tanks, these are designed from the ground up for ease of build and for ease of magnetization. Here you can see what I mean on the Grim Whippet itself. Note the low part count, the design of the mating surfaces and the pre-made holes for the magnets. The weapons are all modular and interchangeable between different tank models, which is really great. Oh, and that trap door in the bottom of the tank? That's for storing your weapons. Neat, huh? My starting point for this tutorial is a dark red undercoat, which will set the tank up for future weathering stages. However, if you're into 3D printed models, let me share a little secret with you. Even if you have mad 3D printing skills and a great 3D printer, layer lines and small defects are almost inevitable. However, you won't see many flaws in this smooth grey finish. The reason for that is that before priming, I applied three coats of a product called Mr. Surfacer 500, which I got in rattle can format. Highly recommended, guys. By the way, here you can see the trapdoor with the weapons that I mentioned before. It's hard to resist the temptation to play with these magnetized guns. But I digress. The next step was to prime the model in black making sure that every nook and cranny was covered. After this, I undercoated the model again in the aforementioned dark red. Now, we'll admit that doing the grey filler, then black primer and then an undercoat was a little OCD of me. Feel free to prime the model in dark red directly, omitting the previous two steps. In fact, there's several brands out there, including Vallejo, AK Interactive and Ammo, which do a really good rattle can spray with a dark red like this. That'll work just fine too. The main thing is, however you do it, once the dark red paint is fully dry, apply masking tape to your tracks. However you apply your base coat, and no matter what your colors of choice may be, you want to preserve that dark red on those tracks. As you can see, I went for a dark yellow base coat myself, which I applied with the airbrush with my usual techniques. A few minutes later, the moment to peel off the masking tape had arrived. As you can see, it was all fine, and only the outer edges of the tracks had gotten any yellow paint. So now it's time to play with both pigments and enamels. Yes, you heard me right, we're using both together. First, decant some enamel track wash into a paint well. Then get about a spoonful, I guess, of pigment and mix it with the enamel. Remember, even if this sounds like a recipe, I wouldn't recommend eating this. <laughs> After it's mixed, add a little bit of enamel thinner and stir again. I'm trying really hard to omit jokes about, you know, serve to taste and all that. <laughs> In any case, now we're going to apply this liberally all over the tracks as if it were a normal wash. Not a pin wash, mind you, as we will be covering the entirety of the area. It's hard to see in the images, I guess, but the effect that you get is that the very dark track wash becomes a little bit more of a mid-tone with the light rust, but also once dry, some of the lighter pigments will show in the recessed areas. That is to say, they will deposit there. This is pretty subtle in this case, but if you added more pigments to the mix, the effect would be more extreme. At this stage, you could simply stop and call it a day. We've all invested a few minutes, after all, and the tracks look pretty decent already, if I may say so myself. However, we're gonna take this further. First, we're gonna get our hands and desk and everything dirty with these Europe Earth pigments. The first thing to do is to sprinkle them liberally over not only the tracks themselves, but also the adjacent areas. Yes, this is sounding like a food recipe again, isn't it? <laughs> After that, take a makeup brush like this and using a stippling motion, spread the pigments over the surface to be dusted. 
by the way, it goes without saying that if this is not the look that you want, just change the pigments. You can get concrete pigments for an urban war environment, sand for a desert one, or of course red rust for that traditional Mars look. Now you can see the other side of the tracks from up close. As you can see, I'm not being shy with the pigments at all. I should warn you at this stage that part of the reason why I'm being so enthusiastic with the pigments is that my tank had been gloss varnished before. What does that mean? Well, it means that some of the pigments would have a hard time sticking to the surface. On an unprotected, completely matte surface, I would be more restrained at first. In any case, if you think that an area has too much dust, just use a clean, soft makeup brush to gently remove any excess, as I'm doing here. But whatever you do, don't forget to apply the pigment to the lower part of the tracks and to all adjacent areas. Otherwise, the finish will be not realistic at all. Also, if your tank does not have track guards, make sure to apply some pigments to the areas which would normally get dirty. Finally, it's time for the pigment fixer. This fixer by Ammo is enamel based. That is to say, it's pretty much enamel thinner with some additives. Applying it is child's play. It works by capillary action, just like a very thin enamel wash would. In other words, simply touch a point on the surface and allow the fixer to flow by itself. That's all. Now bear in mind that until the model is completely dry, it will look as if your pigments had vanished. Fear not, however, for they will magically reappear later. The only caveat to this is that if your surface was gloss, as was the case for me, some of the pigments will actually be dislodged by the fixer. What I did to counteract this was easy. Apply some more later. Here you can see the end result of all the pigment work. However, I wanted to give it one extra touch. We're going to metallize the tracks, so to speak, by using a solid graphite pencil. With this, we will represent the areas of the tracks which have been polished through friction, hence getting rid of any rust or dirt and recovering their metallic shine. Applying the graphite is easy and relaxing. Simply rub the pencil against the tracks side by side and make sure not to forget the edges or any other less visible spots. The tracks on this Grim Whippet are very similar to the real-world counterparts, and as such, they lend themselves beautifully to this technique. Just look at how easily and quickly they transform under the pencil. You may notice that some of the pigments are being dislodged during this step. This is entirely normal and it needs to be taken into account. All you have to do after this is make sure that you varnish your tank. This will fix the graphite in place and will also make sure that your weathering effects survive the rigors of the battlefield. So guys, if you want to win this Grim Whippet, check out my Instagram post containing the giveaway rules. I will be contacting the winner once the giveaway comes to a close and I'll announce the results on social media on Monday, June 27th. That said, this is far from my last giveaway. As some of you know, I'm closing my Patreon and moving to YouTube memberships instead. To commemorate this occasion, I will soon be giving away a heavily weathered Rhino tank painted in 30k Death Guard colors to one of my first 10 YouTube members. So stay tuned for more news on this. One last time, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. Your support, financial and otherwise, has made a huge difference to me since I launched the campaign in October 2020. To be honest, I think I would have quit YouTube long ago if it weren't for you. I hope many of you will make the transition to YouTube memberships with me. And in any case, thank you very much. So, thank you all, and remember, keep it up and weather it out.